Hey everybody, in this video, I'm gonna be talking about my experiences working at Amazon and ultimately why I ended up leaving that job. I wanna talk about my whole experience working there from what I was hired to do, the good and the bad, and any lessons we can learn from my experience. Now, whether your goal is to get into Amazon or some other big tech company, I think you can learn a lot just in general about wanting to work at a big company or what it takes to get in there from my experiences. Also, small disclaimer, the thoughts and opinions I share in this video are my own. I'm not representing Amazon in any way. All right, with that out of the way, let's just jump into it. So I was hired by Amazon in May of 2019. Now, keep in mind, I'm a self-taught programmer and getting to Amazon was actually one of my goals way back in the day. When I first set out to become a programmer, I had a goal for myself that I wanted to make it to a big tech company within at least five years. And I was able to get there within two years. So to actually get an offer from Amazon was a huge deal for me. It also really felt like it was my first big break into the tech industry. Because before I got hired at Amazon, I was really only working at small companies and startups. And so to shift from that to a big company felt pretty daunting at first, but I was at least happy to have the chance to do that. So as you can imagine, I was pretty excited. So when I was hired by Amazon, I was hired to work on an internal project. And this internal project was a mobile app that was used by tens of thousands of Amazonians. The app was only used by Amazon employees, which I thought was really cool. Now, initially when I got hired, I actually didn't know what the name of the project was that I was working on because they kind of kept it a little bit secretive. But when I was hired, they told me exactly what it was and it was a relatively new offering and I would be working on the iOS portion of it. And so being a mobile developer, I was really excited to finally work on a big secret corporate project. But after my training period, I would soon come to find out that I would not be working on anything remotely iOS. Now, of course, the app was written in iOS, you know, Swift code, some objective C, then we also had an Android portion, which was in Kotlin and Java. But then we also had a Python backend, which made use of a lot of AWS tools like DynamoDB, S3, stuff like that. And so during my time working at Amazon, it became apparent that the backend was really just where the bulk of the work was. I think for my entire time there, I probably only worked on maybe three tasks that required me to write actual iOS code. So looking back on it, it was pretty disappointing to get hired for a job to work as a mobile software engineer on a mobile app and then only end up doing backend work. And for those of you that are curious, the project that I worked on was called AEA Mobile App. Basically the way the app works is because it's internal, there has to be certain security procedures that have to be followed. We would give you a link and then from that link, you would download a security certificate. So once that security certificate was downloaded on your phone and you accepted it, you essentially gave us access to some information on your phone, which allowed us to, to assess certain things about your phone. Like if your app was jailbroken or if you had any apps downloaded on your phone that could pose a security risk, things like that. But basically once you had the security certificate downloaded on your phone, that's when you were allowed to use the app. And so when using the app, the app itself was pretty straightforward. It was basically just a web portal that lets you access Amazon's internal services. So if you want to check phone tool, which is like a company only like directory where you can search up anybody. If you want to check your stock information, pretty much any internal service that was available to Amazonians, you could access through your mobile app, which is actually pretty revolutionary because in order to do that previously, you had to, you had to open up your laptop, log into a VPN, authenticate yourself with a UB key or something like that. And then you could actually access respective Amazon services. So before you can only do that on a laptop or computer, with the project that I was working on, you could do that with your mobile app, which at the time was pretty revolutionary for Amazon. So now I wanna talk about the good and the bad. So let's first start off with the good. So one of the good things I guess you could say about Amazon is that it is challenging. Having a challenging job could be seen as a good thing because basically if you can survive at Amazon, you can survive anywhere. They're known for having a pretty stressful work environment where you're gonna be asked to do a lot of things, you know work overtime, take on challenging projects that you may have no idea how to figure out, and that's pretty normal. If you're looking to just, as they say, rest and vest or coast at your job, Amazon isn't the place for you. It's for people that really want to work and kind of throw themselves into their work and take on a lot of responsibility. And that kind of leads into another good thing about Amazon because 
if you're the type of person that really likes to own the products they work on, take initiative, you know, be a leader, if you like doing that, then you're probably going to like Amazon because Amazon really likes those types of people. And another good thing that I want to talk about is that Amazon is actually a place with a lot of smart people. I remember meeting people who were roughly my age at the time in my early 20s, and they were just so talented and so smart. And I felt so dumb compared next to them. So in a way, it's kind of refreshing to be the dumbest person in the room, because when you're the dumbest person in the room, then you have every opportunity to learn. And so you get the opportunity to really learn from a lot of different people. Also, fun fact, when I was working at Amazon, I actually learned that the guy who invented Java works there. I forgot what the guy's name was, and I'm not sure if he still works there, but back in 2019 he was. And it just blew my mind that a guy who invented one of the most widely used programming languages was working in the same department that I was working in, which was AWS. So I thought that was pretty cool. In any case, that's basically all the good that I can think of when it comes to Amazon. If you're looking for something to challenge you and kind of take you to the next level and learn from really smart people, then maybe Amazon's for you. Now we're going to go to the bad. So one of the things that should be no surprise to anyone is that Amazon doesn't really care about your work-life balance. I mean, your manager might say that they care about your work-life balance, but they really don't. At the end of the day, you're just a cog in a machine, as is the case for really any big company. So all the horror stories that you've read online about Amazon are true. And that's the thing about Amazon. The company is very team dependent. If you're lucky enough to have a chill manager and chill team and everything, then you lucked out. But in my case, our team was considered a tier two team. So while not exactly a tier one team, which is like, if something goes wrong, it can impact the entire company. Tier two teams are still pretty brutal to work in because the app that we're working on was used by tens of thousands of people. So if something went down, then everybody would have to scramble to make sure that the app's working again. Our team had a lot of weight on our shoulders. And this kind of ties in my next point because when you work at Amazon, one thing that's guaranteed is on-call. And the thing about on-call at Amazon is that you're not paid extra for it. It's just something that you're expected to do because at Amazon, you're expected to wear 10 different hats and not get paid any extra for it. Again, really great for learning, but if you don't want to do that, then maybe Amazon's not the place for you. But anyways, back to the on-call aspect, on-call is not fun. With our team, it was pretty brutal sometimes. Sometimes I'd get paged at like three in the morning and I would have to answer it. Like there's just no, oh, maybe I'll do it in the morning. You have to answer it right then and there or your boss gets notified and then your boss chews you out. So, you know, for like a whole week, you could potentially be losing out on sleep because of just all the pages that you're getting. So it's super stressful. Now, to be fair, my on-call was pretty brutal at times, but it was also chill. I know there are some teams where it is absolutely just brutal and I wouldn't wish that experience on anyone, but mine was kind of like middle ground. Like it was bad some weeks and okay some other weeks. So not the worst thing in the world. Again, team dependent. But if you don't like the idea of on call or at the very least not getting paid extra for it, then maybe reconsider joining Amazon. Also, one of the things I didn't like about Amazon is that it's very political, you know, office politics. And while I can't think off the top of my head how this impacted me negatively, I can see how it could impact other people negatively. For example, let's say you're trying to get promoted. The promotion process is very vague because they give you a list of criteria that you have to meet, and then you have to have talks with your manager because your manager is supposed to, I guess, guide you to your promotion. But the thing is, even if you deserve to get promoted, like you've been Let's say you've been working super hard for the past year to get promoted. And let's just say you've been doing your job so well that there's almost no reason why they shouldn't promote you because you're just so good at your job. Well, your promotion's not really up to you or your performance per se. It's really up to your manager because even with your manager's guidance, you could be working for years just to get a promotion and still not even get it. Basically, the way it works is your manager has to pitch you to their managers in a annual meeting, or I think it's biannual. Either way, there are not many opportunities to get promoted to Amazon. So you really only have one or two chances a year to do so. And basically, if your manager's managers don't agree that you should be promoted, you don't get promoted. I've also heard there being like a promotion quota. So if that quota is met, then 
again, even if you deserve to get promoted, you just won't. So it's really just kind of dumb stuff like that that kind of rubs me the wrong way. And I can see how other people might get a bit ticked off by it. But just know that Amazon is full of politics like this. So beware. And then the last point that I want to talk about in terms of the bad at working at Amazon is that after working there long enough really starts to feel like a cult. And I'm not exaggerating when I say this because to work at Amazon, you have to follow the core tenets or the leadership principles as they call them. I believe there's 14 of them. Don't quote me on that. I believe it's 14. I think maybe they added a couple more since I left. With these leadership principles, you're supposed to follow them and live by them to the best of your ability. The reason why I don't like it is because people just repeat these leadership principles like learn and be curious, think big, earn trust, have backbone, disagree and commit. There's a whole bunch of leadership principles and people just toss them around all the time, every day, like just casually in conversations. And they say it unironically too, which is just like, that's kind of why it adds this whole like air of like cultiness that Amazon has, which I didn't really like. And another thing about the leadership principles is that your manager and other people will weaponize them against you. So for example, let's say you're in a meeting and you present an idea about something and one of your colleagues shoots down your idea and you just say, oh, okay, whatever. I agree with your reasoning, moving on. Your manager might say during your one-on-one -on -one meeting, oh, remember when so-and-so challenged your opinion on something? Why didn't you push back? You didn't display, have a backbone, disagree and commit. And so it's kind of stuff like that. Like your manager will point out certain things about what you did in the past or your colleagues will point out certain things that you did in the past and they'll use a leadership principle to say, oh, you didn't show X. And I don't know, for me, I just really hated being on the receiving end of that. Like it just, for me, it was super annoying to always be like, oh, you're not showing this leadership principle. You're not showing that or good job on showing this one, but you need to show more of that. Like it just gets old after a while. And, and when everyone's saying stuff like, oh, I need to earn trust more, or I'm going to take ownership of this project. Like it just starts to sound really weird. Like it's a cult and everyone's trying to one up each other so they can look good in the eyes of their manager. And really the worst thing about leadership principles is that it takes away your individuality because if you want to go to Amazon and do things your way and, you know, live by your own rules and just think that as long as you get your work done, you'll be okay. You're not, unless you also embody the leadership principles and live by them, act by them, die by them. If you're doing that, you'll probably be fine. If you don't, other people will start to notice it and they'll start using it against you. So basically when it comes to Amazon, you either adopt the leadership principles or you're going to get fired at some point. It's that simple, which over the years has really had me thinking like it takes a special type of person to work at Amazon. Like not just anyone can work there. For me personally, I would never want to work there again because I'm just not built like that. I'm not built like an Amazonian and I'm fine with saying that. I don't want to live and die by some principles. I don't want to work 80 hours a week. So it's just not for me. Again, for some people, they really thrive in that type of environment. I'm just not one of those people. All right. So that's it for the good and bad of working at Amazon. Now let's look at some of the lessons that I've learned from working there. So first things first, for me personally, I'm not too keen on working in big tech ever again. For me, after having worked in a corporate environment like Amazon, I just didn't really like the feeling of being like a cog in the machine. You know, if I was to work somewhere, I want to work somewhere smaller where I can have more of an impact on the app that I'm working on. In any case, that kind of leads me to the next lesson I learned, which is how huge company culture is, because the culture of a company is really going to affect your experience working there. In the case with Amazon, they value leadership principles and going above and beyond working really hard, stuff like that. So if you work for a company that, that after doing your research, come to find that it's actually a pretty relaxed company, then you should take that into consideration if you're looking to work there, because again, the company's culture is really going to dictate your experience working there. And so based on what you're looking for, if you want something, if you want something more fast paced and challenging, maybe Amazon's for you. For me personally, I value peace and quality of life, work-life balance over money. So for me, I would so much rather work somewhere where I get paid less, but have a better quality of life versus making a lot of money, but having a lot of stress and constantly working. So that's just what I value most. 
at the end of the day, that's a call you're gonna have to make for yourself. So that's pretty much all I wanted to cover for this video. Now, whether you wanna join Amazon or not after hearing my story, regardless, in order to get a job at a big tech company or really any company, you have to get an onsite first. And there are a lot of obstacles you can face on the road to getting an onsite interview. So that's why I know this video will help you right here because I go over everything from resumes, networking, useful coding interview tips, and much more. I designed that video with the sole purpose of helping you land your next software engineering job. So if that sounds interesting to you, then please check it out. In any case, that's gonna do it for this video. Hope you learned something new and I'll see you in the next one.